Um, our next speaker is somebody who I've worked with for a long time. Uh, how much, how strongly I believe in her is reflected in uh, July of 2006 when I was in Atlanta, Georgia, stumping for her re-election when she was a Democrat still. That's how much and strongly I believe in this lady. She has always fought for us. She's fought for our right to vote and for our votes to be counted. She has fought for the people of New Orleans and the Gulf states who have been devastated by another unnatural kind of gentrification where Bayview Hunter Point is San Francisco's Katrina, that they are doing gentrification without a natural disaster. She was the first congressperson to introduce articles of impeachment against George Bush. And I'd like to introduce my sister, Cynthia McKinney. Cindy Sheehan is my sister, and she's America's next congresswoman. Now, the only elected official that I know of whose approval rating is lower than that of George Bush is Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> and she has earned every bit of it. Because instead of the Democratic majority voting immediately to bring our young men and women home from Iraq, she voted her and the Democratic Party's complicity in the war, war crimes, crimes against humanity, torture, crimes against the peace. She, instead of immediately passing legislation for a livable wage, she passed, she was satisfied to settle for a minimum wage increase. But the unfortunate thing is that you could increase the minimum wage from now until 2013, 70 cents every year, and a family of four would still be in poverty. Obviously, increasing the minimum wage is not enough. Immediately, the Democratic majority in the Congress should have voted to repeal the Patriot Acts, but they did not do that. Instead, they enabled George Bush's illegal and un-American spying on the American people. George Bush has committed crimes against the American people and high as the highest crimes that are more than misdemeanors. That's right. Not only against us, but against the international community. That's right. Yeah. And impeachment is deserving. That's right. Impeachment Woo! is deserving. That's right. She doesn't have the right to go against the will of the American people and take impeachment off the table. Thank goodness that Cindy Sheehan stepped up and decided that she would run against this woman who has betrayed the very values that the Democratic Party espouses and has betrayed her constituents and betrayed all of us and them, because I didn't, go to the polls and voted the Democratic majority into Congress. So now, what is it that we must do? First of all, we must never give up. We must never give in. We must remember that there were people who had far less than us, and they, but they did have determination. And with that determination, they were able to change the course of this country. I'm talking about folks in the civil rights movement who faced lynchings and dogs and water hoses just so that their children could go to school. I'm talking about four university students who decided that they would sit down so that every American could have a little bit of dignity. And they sat in and they are responsible, along with millions of other Americans who came to the South, they are responsible for the Civil Rights Act in 1964 being passed, the Voting Rights Act in 1965 being passed. And so you have today a very trite 
conversation going on about race. Right. Let me tell you that that conversation is undeserving of the character and the quality of the American people and the American electorate. Amen. We have challenges that face our country and I know that I visited almost 25 states across this country and I can tell you that the American people are looking for people who will give them solutions and not bumper sticker slogans. Right. That's what you're getting from the Democrats. That's what you're getting from the Republicans. But from alternative parties, from independents, we can have a real conversation. Right. Not just about race, not just about the war, but about all of the challenges that face our country. Like, for instance, debt. Did she tell you that she raised the debt of this country, the debt limit, to ten trillion dollars. Wow. And so, uh, as America's needs go unmet, we are ever more increasingly in debt. The U.S. dollar is just a piece of paper. Our president said that the Constitution was just a piece of paper. But we've got to put value into our dollar just like we've got to put value into our public policy. Yeah. I am so happy to see Cindy step up, but let me tell you, all of you can step up. Yeah. Every one of us can step up. Yeah. And Curtis, you need to be on the city council. You need to be one of those county supervisors. I'm telling you, and I'll tell you something else. I'm wearing, and then I'll be quiet. I'm wearing the San Francisco 8 pin yeah, here. Yeah. I did not realize that it was your Attorney General here in California, yep, Jerry, Brown. Jerry Brown, who was responsible for the prosecution of the San Francisco 8. Now, I don't know if he's subject to term limits or not, but I can guarantee you he ought to have somebody running against him for doing, for daring to take the people for granted in a prosecution like this, an unwarranted prosecution like this. People who betray the values of their constituents do not deserve to be part of the government. The government actually is us. It's supposed to be us. And we have an opportunity to learn from countries where people power has stepped up and through the, ba the power of the ballot, they have changed things, like in Venezuela, like in Bolivia, like in Chile, like in Argentina, like in Ecuador, like in Bolivia. They have changed things, people power. And so our campaign is called the Power to the People Committee, and we are asking people of every political persuasion to join with us in the creation of a new people power movement that can change our country, change the policies and the values of our country, and take our government back.